Thank you for having me. We definitely got another amazing interview set up for y'all. I'm one of your hosts, Prince and Ellis. And I'm Mel Rose. And we are here about to interview an amazing singer, talented person, Miss Melissa Morgan. How are you doing? Yes. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Good. We're all right, we're all right. A cute mirror you got there. That, that, everything you got over there is looking fly, yes. Well, this is my closet. So <laughs> he can he can give you a little tour. This is my my closet. Oh, okay. So yeah. <laughs> so and, yeah. So we'll give you a little tour as, as we go on. Uh -huh. oh, oh, I see the shoes. Hold, hold up. Hold up. No, gas them up and in here. Yes. Bags and all of this up. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Thank you. <laughs> How are you, by the yes, way? You. I'm good. I'm good. We're here in South Carolina. Uh, we've uh, uh, kind of weathered the pandemic here, and uh, we're feeling good because um, we're in Aiken, South Carolina, and there were only like a um, hundred cases of uh, Coronavirus here, COVID, and death in in in. So I feel to be here, and and I'm just commending them for doing such a wonderful job of uh, keeping this thing contained here. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's definitely a good thing to know. So, how are you dealing with it, as far as like being in the house, and you know? So how are you managing, you know, your day to day by uh, just being in the house with this virus and the situation that's going on? I, I, I think I manage it pretty well because I like staying in the house. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm a homebody, and uh, my house is really, uh, I didn't know it then, but it's, it's designed to be okay to be in the house because uh, we have a big backyard. We have, I have a. Uh, porch in the front. I have a patio on the side, a screened-in patio. Um, my uh, laundry room is out there. The kitchen is 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 uh, great. Um, this is my grandma's house, and I renovated it, so everything is like almost like brand new. So, so we're doing pretty good here. We're we're enjoying it. We take our supermarket runs, and uh, we have, I wear mask and gloves and. And uh, then we come back home, and, and I'm good. I crochet and cook and all that good stuff. So I'm really weathering it well. The only thing, I miss singing. I do miss singing, and I miss the crowd and all that stuff. But uh, uh, we'll get back to that when it's safe. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, like, who are some of the R&B singers you're listening to right now? Or your, your top few, let's say your top. Oh, who am I listening? Yeah, give me like the top three. I, what, what, top three that I like listening to? Oh, hmm. Oh my goodness, I, I like her. Her is nice, isn't she? She's uh, great. Uh, I like uh, Lettucey. Yeah, and the uh, right. Well, wait, we lost you real quick. Uh oh. Oh, she's coming back. No, we, we back. She got to turn it. Turn the turn phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Got it. She can see you. Oh, oh. Turn the phone sideways. Yeah, turn it sideways. Yeah. Wait. We don't get it together. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulties, people, if you're listening in. Right. We're having the interview with Melissa Morgan. Melly Morgan. Like sideways like that. Sideways like that. Turn, turn, turn the phone like this. <laughs> hey, you gotta get vision. I can't we can't hear her either. No, we can't. But we gotta, yeah, we gotta get up there rolling. The side, there we go, the sound. Perfect. So now we just gotta have it flipped horizontally. I have it, I have, I have it sideways. It this is straight up. Then turn it this up way. None of you. There. there you wait. Almost right there. Perfect. 
upside down. All right, we're back. So I was asking you, I was asking you uh, your, your top three singers you're listening to at this moment. Well, not um, at this moment, but on your playlist. <laughs> okay, um, I like her. Um, I like Lettucey and uh, whew, R&B. Whew. I'm trying to see, we, we was just listening to some, some old school stuff. Uh, once we listened to Jodeci, yeah, we was listening to some Jodeci earlier oh, today. We like the girl that sings with black. Yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. But you know what? We've, we've been listening to some Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> really, I, I'm telling you, I'm, yeah. I've been listening to a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I just want to take you back. Fleetwood Mac. Uh, <laughs> what were some of the songs being played? Yeah, tell me the Huh? What were some of the songs that was being played in your house when you were coming up when you were younger? In my youth? Yeah. Oh my God, in my youth we listened to uh when the early youth, Aretha Franklin, uh Jay's Brown, uh, uh the Supremes, all that in my early, early youth, because uh that's what the, you know, that's what my mother and them listened to. And uh later on, Earth Wind and Fire. Shaka Khan and Rufus, uh, oh, all those, all those great groups, the emotions, and um, then in in you know uh, by the time I hit uh, nineteen twenty, I was uh, uh, in a background with like a sheep, and we were opening for Gladys Knight, and I uh, went on the tour with Shaka Khan. I went out on the road with her and studio stuff with Jocelyn Brown and uh, oh, just a whole bunch of people. So uh, all those people were very influential. Yeah. Oh, wow, wow. So what, what's your process when you're in the studio, when you was going into the studio? Or even now, I mean, now that you're, you know, you're more, we're in quarantine, you're at home, I'm sure you're probably writing some songs. Is this your favorite place to write your songs or? No. <laughs> no, I'm 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 not even going in front of that. I'm I'm not really inspired to 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 write right now. Really? You know, um uh, when I get in the studio, when I hear music, then I get inspired and probably something. Of, of what I've gone through now, you know, will 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 trigger me, and uh, and and I'll be able to write about it. But um, right now, I'm just really uh, absorbing everything that's happening, and and kind of in disbelief that this is happening during 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 my generation. While <laughs> while we're alive. I I never thought anything like this would happen, you know, uh, in my lifetime. So. I, I'm really kind of absorbing it, and, and it'll be like right here, and, mm -hmm. and when I go into the studio, um, some of it will come out lyrically, but right now, it, I, I'm not really inspired to just, oh, let me sit down and write, because I, I don't want to write when, when, it's, when it's all bad, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it, right when it's all, all bad is, is going to give you all bad and, and dark stuff, and, and uh I'm really not that kind of singer. I sing about love. I, I sing about hurt and stuff like that, but I don't sing about all bad stuff. And I think that if I, I wrote now, that that's what the energy would be. Even though I'm I'm happy and I feel good, the state of the world is just, you know, yeah. it's a little sad right now. I, I, I don't want to just write about that. I, I want it to be a part of some of my writing, but I want to get back to the to the good times. Right, right. That's true. Definitely, definitely. Now what was some of the things that you did as far as like music be early on? What was some of the like, like things that started your career? What would you say is some things that really jump started your career as far as musically singing? I, I, I didn't get the question. <laughs> What were some of the what are some of the what were some of the things early on in your career that jump started you that made you want to take music very seriously as a full time career? What were some of the things that did you hear, babe? I didn't hear that much. It keeps breaking up. 
my goodness. Should we move? I'm wondering if we should move. Is it is it us or is it them? Should should we move into another yeah, 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 spot? Is it maybe the let's, let's 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 move and see if it, let me just see if it, hey guys we're in, in, in my living room area so uh, and this is my kitchen we'll is it the floor? This, yeah I don't know it, hi let me see can I can I get better <laughs> yeah. ask the question okay what were some of the things that made you take music as a career seriously? Oh, I don't know. I, I started out in a choir, uh, in a gospel choir, and um, I kind of, uh, hmm, I always knew I wanted to be a singer. So uh, I think it hit me when I was little. It hit me when I was little. So uh, by the time I hit about, about 15 or 16, everybody in, in my family and everybody, you know, my friends and everything, everybody knew that I, I was going to be a singer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I just want to make sure I got everything. Yeah. So, you recently, they, they, I've, I've seen that you've gone to a bit of a hiatus, but you came back and you put a, a, another album working with Roberta Flack and, and Donna Hathaway. How was, how was, how was working with them? No, 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 no. I, I didn't work with them. What happened is that um, when I came back, um, I was with a, a company called Hush Productions. Okay. And they're the ones that's responsible for the Do Me Baby and um, uh, Love Changes and uh, uh, with some Fool's Red Ice and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, they were influential. That, then I left them and I went to Capitol and signed mm -hmm. directly with Capitol. And then after that, I went back to Hutch because they started a, a new company called mm -hmm. um, Orpheus. And um, when, we, when, when we went back, I wanted to do Back Together Again because I wanted to work with Freddie Jackson. And uh, so me and Freddie Jackson went in and did Back Together Again, and it was produced by someone else. I know Roberta Flack, and uh, she was a sweetheart. I never met Donnie Hathaway, but um, uh, me and Freddie went in with another producer and did Back Together Again. And it turned out really good. It was a, a top 10 uh, R&B song. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That's what it is. Great, amazing things to do. Like, so what are some of your processes of creating in the studio are you more of a just a one-on-one -on -one type of person you and the producers or is it, is it a team that's with you when you're in the studio and you're creating what you're creating um well it's always a team because i i don't uh, uh do the music usually the music is is sent to me so it's always a, a team effort uh i usually get the music first and uh then i start writing so like my last uh, CD, um, uh, Love Demands, that was with uh, uh, Brady Ghazi. And uh, he would send the music to me. I would listen to it and then I would write. So it usually is a, a, a combined, a collaboration effort, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> so um, in, in your career, what would, what would you have ch uh, chosen if you wasn't a singer? Oh. Oh wow. I think <laughs> I think I would have been a secretary. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I would have been a secretary. Yeah. No, my fiance says no, I wouldn't be a secretary. <laughs> a lawyer. Why, 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 why would you say he said he's a lawyer? <laughs> a lawyer, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because I will read those a contracts. Prosecutor. And, and, a prosecutor. You know what I say? I don't know about other artists, but I say all my papers. I say everything. I think I have like the first contract, the first everything. I I have stuff from when I was in um, um, school, high school, junior high school, probably elementary too. I save everything. So. Um, being a lawyer probably would have been good for me because that—that's what it's about. It's getting about the paperwork. <laughs> that's funny. 
hey, different things with different people, you know, you know, sometimes it might be a, a great you know, thing for somebody. Now, yeah. what I want to know is, what are like four things that you would need, like let's say if you was doing to perform a show and they had your green room set up, what are four things that you would make sure you had in your green room before you got on stage to perform? Oh, that, that's a good question. Um, okay, what's in my writer? Uh, fruit. I like I like I like cut up fruit, strawberries, um, blueberries, kiwi, oranges, pineapples, all that stuff. I, I like that. Fruit bowl. Uh, um, um, a fruit fruit tray. Um, hot tea, uh, and and uh, honey and lemon. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I like to to have my honey and lemon and and herbal tea, sometimes chamomile or or blueberry or peach or something like that. Uh, what else? Uh, towels. Towels, yeah, gotta have towels and uh, water and juice. Yes. And afterwards, uh, shrimp. Yeah, and then afterwards, because um, I don't eat before, but then uh, and I don't eat uh, chicken, I don't eat fried chicken and nothing like that. So I always order like a. Uh, a shrimp and pasta meal, yeah. Okay. Yes. So I know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm I'm assuming since the the whole COVID, there was like a, a Voices of Soul R and B you were gonna do at the Foxwoods, I believe that was that was that something you were working on or I'm not something I I, I researched maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna do the Foxwoods with uh, Stephanie Mills and. Yeah. And the whispers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What, what, what were the the? I mean, I'm, unfortunately, we can't get the whole concert anymore. But and you know, do you have any uh, songs that you could kind of tell us you were gonna play, or maybe any surprises that were gonna happen, or how you were gonna perform? Maybe give us a kind of a visual. Oh my goodness! Well, the first thing that I was thinking about for that show, and me and Stephanie Mills of friends, was what to wear. <laughs> Okay, well, what are you going to wear? That's good. I'm sorry. I was thinking about what to wear, girl. I was like, okay, am I going to come out in a gown? Am I going to come out in, a, in rhinestones or what? How is the hair going to look? Uh, I was thinking about what to wear because, you know, Stephanie comes out, she says, and she ain't but about four foot something. So, you know, we have to be cute. And she always comes out with the cutest shoes. So I was thinking about what to wear. And um, then after that, I just, I toured with the Whispers before. Um, I had the pleasure of touring with them all through my career. But recently, about a year and a half ago, I toured, about two years ago, I toured with Patti LaBelle and, um, and the Whispers because uh, we went over to Europe. And mm. we did five, yeah, we've been about five days in, in the UK. And we did Wembley, uh, we did Manchester, we did Amsterdam. And it was just simply spectacular. So um, I've, I've worked with the Whispers before, so I always look forward to working with the twins. Um, but uh, I was just going to concentrate on really rocking the house. And, oh, I'm uh, sure you yeah, yeah, being in Connecticut, I was just really going to hit them with basically the hits that would be, you know, Love Changes, um, Fool's Rat Ice, Do You Still Love Me, mm -hmm. Do Me Baby, uh, and some stuff from my, my new CD, um, Love Demands. I probably would have did How Can You Mend a Broken Heart or something like that because it, it you know, that was a real, real soul R&B yeah. show. So I, I could do things like that. Maybe um, um, uh, Never Love a Man the Way That I Love You, which is on my new CD, Love Demands. I would have done something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And, and as far as that new CD, um, who are some of the people that you worked with on that CD and some of the songs that you really knew that was like the single you really wanted to push? Well, we we started. I, I worked with my fiance, who was a rapper. I worked with Sebastian, Sebastian Common. So that was really nice working with him. But basically, that was uh, Brady Gazi and me and uh, Cleopatra Records, and um, it was really a lot of fun. I the thing that I liked about a Love Demands is that 
there was six cover songs and six new songs. So I got to pick uh, wonderful songs like Love Is Here and Now You're Gone by The Supremes, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart, um, Al Green, uh, like I said, Never Love the Man, The Way I Love You, the Aretha Franklin. We even did the Tom Jones, It's Not Unusual. Uh, um, who was it? Otis Redding. Um, we did that one. Oh, we just did just so many wonderful things on, on that CD. I'm going to pull it out for you so you can see it and people can order it. But uh, yeah, that was, it was a great experience because I was able to um, have a little freedom creatively. And, and, and I was um, one of the producers. So it, it was really a lot of fun. How was working with, because I'm an all-time Prince fan, how was working with Prince? See, that's what people think that I work with Prince, but I didn't work with Prince. No, no. Um, um, the president of Capitol Records had that that song on hold for like two years before I even got with Capitol, and and he was running out of time holding the song. And he said, "The next R&B female that I sign, she's got to do this song." And I was the next one. I was like eighteen or nineteen when I did that song. It, you know, I, I don't want to do a Do Me Baby song. <laughs> right, 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 right. But uh, I loved Prince, and um, uh, everyone thought, you know, it was it was a, a good fit with my voice. And Paul Lawrence actually produced that for me in the studio, and uh, it turned out to be one of my biggest hits. But I did meet Prince. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, we were going to work on um, another song for the second the second uh, um, album that I did, and it was called Please Come Home, but our schedules just just didn't mesh, so he wound up doing that song with Mavis Staples. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Now I'm going to listen to it differently and see how you would... <laughs> It'd be cool yeah. if you could remix it, yeah. like get on it too. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I, I, I work with some wonderful people uh, on remixes, Jay-Z. You don't like the lighting, babe? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, 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 he's looking for something. I'm like, should I move? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, I've worked with Jay-Z because, you know, my songwriting has, has helped me a lot through my years. So um, I did a remix with Jay-Z uh, for Can't Knock the Hustle. LL Cool J has sampled my stuff on Stand By Your Man, mm -hmm. The Fool's Paradise. Um, Mary J. Blige has uh, uh, used some of my stuff, so I'm a co-writer on her song, A Good Woman Down. Uh, um, who else? Uh, oh, I got my Diamond Platinum Award for singing background on Whitney Houston's first uh, uh, CD, Whitney, so the album CD. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've worked with a lot of good people. Uh, yeah, you have. Wow, like a legend in the make. I mean, not a legend in the making, a legend in the game. I mean, like, wow. Yeah, and you know what? I, I've, I've been wanting to tell people that my um, um, oral history is now a permanent um, um, fixture in the Library of Congress through, um, oh, who is it? The history makers, yes. So um, I'm in the Library of Congress uh, as an R&B singer. Officially, Melissa Morgan, the R&B singer, and, and my oral uh, biography is in the Library of Congress in Washington. Wow. Amen. And I, right? Amen. Thank you, History Makers. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, absolutely. Definitely shout out there. Yeah, like I said, we are definitely hanging out with Melissa Morgan. We are live on Facebook, and we are live on Instagram. We're just having a great time just hanging out. And I know some a lot of fans are watching and artists. They some people would love to know like what are some of the sacrifices that you feel like you had to make, like on that process and that journey of of your career. Uh, um, having a family probably yeah that was ever something that that really was at the top of my list. The the career was was more important. So, you know, I don't have any kids, but, but I'm a great auntie. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, um, I have my fiance, Sebastian. So um, now I have love. And, now you have kids. Uh, and now I have kids, but I treat them like a kid. <laughs> <laughs> now you got a kid, exactly. 
Yes, um, exactly. Want to do, so. Yeah. <laughs> so that and and um in in, in my uh, grown up years I haven't had a pet. I do I do want a pet, but traveling and stuff it makes it hard. But uh, I do want a pet. So things like that, you know, spending more time with the family. What kind of pet? Know. You said you said a pet, dog, cat, any kind you actually looked into? Well, I want one? a cat. I want a cat and and a small dog. But a small dog. <laughs> and a small, a small tiny something. Oh man, that's gonna be that's gonna be some. You're gonna have a lot of entertainment around the house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we are, um, I I have a place in, in New York, a co-op, and we was I wasn't able to have a. Um, pet there, but here in South Carolina, like I said, this is my grandma's house and I renovated, but I just walked away and we're gonna build uh, um, a new house, big, big, like 3,000 square foot house. And when I build that, then I'm gonna get my pet because then we'll officially be, you know, down here and not back and forth so much. 